At 10.30 a.m. local time on August 7, 1998, a massive truck bomb exploded outside the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi's CBD. Minutes later, another truck bomb detonated outside the U.S. Embassy in Dar es Salaam in neighboring Tanzania. That's right. Now, the twin terrorist attacks carried out by al-Qaeda killed more than 224 people, wounding more than 5,000. Now, on tonight's national reminder, our very own Victoria Rubadiri takes us through through the events that followed and what's transpired now 23 years on. Take a look. It was one of Kenya's darkest days. A horrifying terrorist attack at the United States Embassy on the corner of Moy and Helsalasi Avenues would not just permanently change a portion of the landscape of Nairobi's CBD, but the psyche of Kenyans. People really should sort their problems without terrorizing others. How do you expect this to uh, support from people of Kenya? Kenya? Kenya has always lived in peace against no one. Why should they target Kenya? Over 200 Kenyans died in the deadly blast, with another 5,000-plus injured, many of them maimed and blinded. Following thorough investigations, U.S. federal agents determined that al-Qaeda was responsible. This, many victims hoped, would be the beginning of their path to justice. More than 20 people were charged in connection with the bombings. Some are serving life sentences in the U.S. Others who were not detained have been killed, notably al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. That the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of al-Qaeda. A long quest to compensate the over 5,000 victims would be riddled with fits and starts. Reports back in 2010 that the American government planned to compensate victims up to 880 million shillings if a U.S. judge ruled in their favor offered some hope. However, by August 2013, 15 years after the attack, that hope was fading. It emerged there would be a challenge with collecting the proceeds from the U.S. government. The payments would come from assets seized from al-Qaeda. That would further delay the process that sought to compensate about 500 Kenyans being represented by American lawyer Philip Mussolino. In August 2014, a court in New York awarded a separate group of six Kenyan victims $1 billion or roughly 100 billion shillings. The proceeds would also come from recovered al-Qaeda assets. By July 2015, a majority of Kenyan victims had not been compensated, seeing them pile pressure on the government and accusing it of neglecting them. The argument in the courts is that it's the Kenyan government that should compensate its own people. Yet the same way the American government did compensate its own people. Court rulings over the years either excluded non-U.S. citizens from potential damage awards or ordered payments to African victims from al-Qaeda proceeds. Employees and contractors of the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi were the main beneficiaries of victim settlements. <laughs> The attacks were carried by the same group, so we feel we have been discriminated, even not being left out. Support outside of court settlements did come from U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID, that gave nearly $45 million dollars that translated to 4.5 billion shillings at the time, to the families of 173 Kenyan citizens killed or injured. That assistance mainly came in the form of coverage for medical expenses. This year, there appeared to be a breakthrough in March when it was announced that Sudan had paid $335 million as compensation for victims. 
However, the deal only included punitive damages to families or victims of those injured who were U.S. nationals or U.S. embassy workers. In the latest attempt, victims filed a petition at the High Court here in Kenya back in May this year through legal aid group Kitua Chasheria. They want to be compensated on grounds that the attack was as a result of negligence and failure by security agencies. They also want President Uhuru Kenyatta to form a commission of inquiry to establish just what happened prior to the bombing. Over two decades later, And the pain of justice delayed cuts deeper as victims continue to wait for a piece of redemption as they seek to forget the harrowing events of that fateful Friday. That's your national reminder of the week, lest you forget.